Hi students, in this module you will be learning about the pest control programs. As all of us are aware, pests are ubiquitous in nature, existing in the household, in commercial establishments, everywhere around in the environment. It is impossible to avoid them totally, but we should have good procedures in place, whether it is at household level or at a commercial level or food outlets which are small in operation or what we call as small food business operators. Everyone should ensure that their immediate environment or the environment in which the food is being processed and being retailed is free from the pests. So, we will learn in this module how we can manage the pests efficiently and about the integrated pest management system and finally, how we ensure that a good pest control management program is in place in the commercial establishments, in the retail outlets and all other places where food is being supplied to the consumers. From this module, you are going to learn about the pest control systems, prevention of the pests coming in the food system, managing the pest free environment to ensure food safety. These are some of the common pests that you will encounter even in your home environment and there are different type of pests of course which are known as stored product insects. These stored product insects for example rice one stores, lentils we store so there are pests in these and they fall into two main categories according to their ability to infest the product. Primary those having the ability to penetrate the whole grains these are further subdivided into internal that is those insects whose life cycle is completed inside the grain or the bean. You will see a hole left by the existing exist, exiting adult which is very characteristic. Then there are those insects which are external that is their life cycle is completed outside the grain. Then there are secondary ones which tend to feed on the fungus that is present in poorly stored or damaged product that is they do not directly thrive on the insects. In this powerpoint, you would see different food items and the pest which are commonly found to infest the particular category of the food items. There are again high risk areas for infestation of the pests within a food manufacturing unit. These are the high risk areas where there is a greater risk of compromising the food safety or where the product is particularly at high risk of developing pest infestation. Typical high risk areas and potential pests would be the incoming raw and packaged foods and stored product pests, finished goods, warehouses and mice. The intermediate risk areas are those where there is a risk of compromising food safety from pest activity but where the product is not particularly at a very high risk. Then there are the low risk areas that is the areas where there is minimal risk of compromising food safety from pest activity or where the product is at low risk. Another phenomenon is the pest sighting or the complaints made by the prof professionals or the personals other than those who are involved in the pest management. Their information should not be ignored and it should be properly investigated by the management. Water and the lighting in the facility is important. One must never have ornamental ponds in the premises, have stagnant water that breeds the pests like mosquitoes are the easily uh, bred in the stagnant water. Then readily available sources of water that will encourage rodents particularly the rats, mice which require water for their survival. A good drainage of the land is required to avoid also a waterlogged soil. Then insects are attracted to UV light and some may be brought in from far away as 100 meters by air currents etc or by night flying species which are attracted to light. 
Others may be attracted to the light only when they are few kilometers away, that is the day flying species. Therefore, good manufacturing practices require a proper pest control program and therefore the food has to be produced under hygienic pest free environment so that contamination of microbial agents which are transferred by pests are minimized. Establishment of procedures for pest control is an important component of the GMP. The rodents and insects function as vectors thriving on the food which is available there and transfer the pathogenic bacteria to the food. Sometimes birds are also a problem in the food processing area and they pose a potential public health hazard. Another category of the pests are the insects. The insects are very broad group. They may be crawling insects, they may be flying insects. This figure shows the crawling flying insects. The most common type of this group that infest the food processing plants, food serving facilities are the cockroaches. Ubiquitously present everywhere. It has been demonstrated that many of them carry different pathogenic microorganisms including the Salmonella, Vibrio, cholerae and viruses like poliomyelitis etc. They come in contact with food through biting and chewing. They prefer carbohydrate rich foods. They may feed on any other food which man normally consumes. They also thrive on human waste, decaying material, dead insects, animals, paper, wood material and use them as feed for their survival. They are nocturnal and hence more active in the night and in dark areas where human activities are less. Particularly cockroaches are nocturnal, they are hidden in small spaces and in between the equipments and shelves, even sometime under the linings of refrigerators and under the shelf liners. This picture shows you the figure of a German cockroach which is commonly present everywhere in the world and these are found in hidden form in dark hiding places where availability of food and water is there in the food processing industries commonly infesting the foods in restaurant, processing room as well as storage area, homes, offices, lockers and restrooms. Then there is the oriental cockroach which is again dark brown to black in color and they prefer a habit similar to American cockroach. Next we have what are known as the flying insects. Flying insects are also vectors for transferring microorganism. Common example is the house fly which are attracted more to sweet preparations and they are found everywhere and they also sit on the human waste and they transfer dangerous bacteria to the food. The house flies are worldwide and they carry thousands of pathogenic bacteria. They are more prevalent in warm locations. Then they are more also active between temperatures of 12 to 35 and 40. There is another category of the flying insects called as the fruit flies which is present mostly on the fruits. This is known as Drosophila melanogaster. They are attracted to rotten material and fruits and it's very difficult to totally eliminate. They are very small in size. The detection of the insects therefore is important in order to eradicate because if you do not identify then how one can eradicate this or have a pest control program. There are different ways to detect these insects. One is by physically sighting, other is by their strong smell. For example, when cockroach infestation is there, there is a typical smell which the cockroach gives or emits and that can help us in identifying. Then their fecal matter etc. in and around the places where they are breeding or hiding may be found and these are again the indicators that they are around. The rodents are again another category of pests which are there in the storage rooms or where the food is being prepared. They are also found in the retailer shops everywhere they are ubiquitously present again. Rats transfer many diseases such as leptospirosis, murine typhus, cholera, salmonella to man. One dropping of a rat can carry millions of harmful microorganisms. Dry droppings may be carried into food by air movement. A rat can enter through openings as small as a quarter, climb vertical brick walls, jump up to a meter and it can go horizontally vertically. They can also swim and have ability to swim through toilet bowl traps. The rats need 15 to 50 ml of free water per day in order to survive. That's why we should not have ornamental ponds as well as stagnant water because this provides one of the necessity for the rats to breed and live. 
Next is the mice which can enter any building through a small hole. Like the rat, mice too can swim through the floor drains and toilet bowl traps. They are also filthy as rodents and spread number of infectious diseases and survive on the water derived from food also. They are easily carried into food premises in crates and cartons. They are very tiny and they also go into the metal and wood based snap traps etc. which can be used to remove them from the food processing or or the food manufacturing site. Indications of the rat and the mice infestation can be again by fecal dropping besides physical sighting and they indicate that they are around the place and uh, the size of the mouse dropping may be about 13 to 19 millimeter and, uh, uh, and approximately it could be 3 millimeter long and 1 millimeter in diameter in the case of the mice. Lastly, it is the bird infestations which also may be there because sometimes pigeons they live in, in, in and around air conditioning units etc and they also are potential carriers of mites, mycosis, pseudotuberculosis, toxoplasmosis, salmonella and other organisms that can cause serious diseases like encephalitis and other health related problem. Their droppings again carry plenty of microorganisms which are all detrimental to humans and birds can also cause infest infestations and the diseases caused by them are usually known as cytokosis. Bird infestations can be reduced to proper management and sanitation. The pest status of the ants is very interesting. Although these are considered as a pest, they really do not harm the food or they do not transfer any pathogenic bacteria. However, they do affect the quality of the food and the saleability of the food. When ants find their way into the kitchen and production area, there is a risk that food will be destroyed by the ants because they eat away some of the food and the foods containing the ant must be discarded because we do not like to serve the customers or the consumer with the presence of ants in the final product which is not acceptable. So the harborage and infestation which is the determinant of the presence of the pest is controlled by the availability of the food, the water. These are the ones which encourages the pest harborage and the infestation. Potential food sources therefore should be stored in pest proof container and or stacked above the ground and away from the wall. Areas both inside and outside premises should be kept very clean. And the eradication programs or the pest infestations can be dealt with immediately and without affecting the food safety and suitability if it is done on time. Pests should be destroyed without chemicals wherever possible because of the potential danger to the human health due to indiscriminate use of pesticides. The best method for control of infest insect infestation relies on good sanitary housekeeping measure with the use of pesticides under the supervision of a licensed operator. An integrated chemical control sanitary practice can be more effective and more economical. The insect control program in a facility should essentially have the steps to eliminate their harborage area that is restrict the availability of food and water, elimination of food and water as well as preventing their entry by using proper screening method, storing the food away from the floor, leaving aside at least 50 cm along the walls and removing the cartons and boxes from the premises as soon as the supplies have been unpacked, control of air currents because they frequently carry flies at a much greater distance than they normally travel then self closing doors etc so that doors are not open for a long time and remain so use of electric fly traps can be used if flies are more in that particular area or locality then destruction of insects can also be attempted by using insecticides and traps there are several insecticides which are available in the market and fumigation can be done periodically in the food industry primarily to control the insects which attack the stored product. Fumigation can help in destroying the hidden pests and fumigants act on the pest by inactivation of the respiratory enzyme. For example, phosphine, ethylene oxide, methyl bromide are all used as fumigants and these are all toxic to several systems of the insects. 
There are other methods of insect control for example, baits can be used or they are used to with a combination of pesticides or some other food product to attract the insect. Biological control of the insects is frequently incorporated in the integrated pest management program. Viruses, fungi, bacteria can be used for this purpose. Specific sex pheromone traps to catch the insects have been developed and they are now available commercially. Some other chemical attractants are also available for various species and some are being used to control the fruit flies. The rodent control. Effective control of rodents, elimination of rodent shelters, elimination of rodent food sources, prevention of rodents to enter the building, use of tracking powders, gassing, trapping, use of ultrasonic devices are some of the method to get rid of the rodents in a facility. What should be the precautions against the use of pesticides? Because these are more easily used and more commonly used. Although proper sanitary practices are more effective and more economical than the pesticides, sometimes their use is unavoidable. The top management should be responsible and they should have a competent person to develop a pest prevention and control program and give them the necessary support to carry out the program. The pesticide should be used in accordance with label instructions. Persons who applied in the plant should have responsibility to use the right an approved pesticide to apply it correctively as well and to be certain there is no hazard to man or environment. Chemical pests have to be used with caution during the time when food production activity is not active as they may contam contaminate the food. Some of the precautions that should be taken into consideration are given below. Reading the instructions on the container label, use of approved pesticides, avoid it, prolonged exposure and wearing a protective clothing, storing pesticides separately from food and in proper label, disposing empty containers safely, knowing the first aid measures for accidental poisoning, calling a physician if an accidental poisoning occurs, if immediate assistance cannot be obtained, treatment should include induction of vomiting, prevention of pesticide contaminations to food, equipment and utensils, storing pesticides in dry area with a temperature of below 35 degrees, storing pesticides in their original containers. The integrated pest management is another approach to curtail the pest infestation in a facility and there are steps for an effective pest management program. In the food manufacture, it is necessary to employ integrated pest management program. The figure indicated here shows you the basic components of the pest management program. This is a process, continuous process and not a one-time event and relies solely on chemical controls when other tools are available and by addressing the underlying the causes of pest infestations, access to food and water and shelter, we employ other methods and not just chemical. Therefore, IPM can prevent infestation before even pesticides are considered for use. In practice, it is an ongoing cycle of seven critical steps. The first is the inspection. An inspection program is a part of effective pest control system. Inspection is a preventive monitoring control measure which is time consuming but important and cost effective activity. It is generally done by using a checklist. For food processors, weekly inspections are common and some plants inspect even more frequently. These routine inspections should focus on areas where pests are more likely to appear like receiving dog storage area, employee break room, site of recent ingredients, spills, etc and identify the potential entry point, food and water source, harborage zones which may encourage the pest and the inspection should be done on raw material, adjunct production, storage premise. Second is the preventive action that is before the pest can enter they should be prevented by proper wind, wire meshing and other blocking of the pest entries. Then identification by identifying the problematic species the pest can be eliminated effectively. Professional pest management always starts with correct identification of the pests in question and the reasons for their infestation. Laboratory testing of the sample should be carried out using a field test method, insects, insect fragment, eggs, larvae, rodent hair, 
excrement all should be identified. Then comes the analysis which is the fourth step. Once the pest is identified, it is possible to control. Possible reason should be accumulation of food debris or moistures which are high and uh, these should be then controlled then how they are finding the ways to enter the premises. Then the treatment selection. IPM stresses on the use of non-chemical control method such as exclusion or trapping before deciding on chemical options. Whether other control methods have failed or if they are inappropriate for the situation, chemicals may be used in least volatile formulation in targeted areas to treat the specific pests. Often the right treatment will consist of a combination of responses from chemical treatment to baiting or trapping. Then monitoring. Pest management is an ongoing process, therefore constantly the efficacy of the management program should be assessed and improvision should be made as and when they are necessary. Then is the documentation. Pest control documentation system should be developed, maintained in the facility. Important documents include a scope of service, pest activity reports, service reports, corrective action reports, trap layout maps, list of approved pesticide, pesticide uses, reports and applicator licenses, etc. Then the waste management is again important because this is the place where the pests get their food for their life sustenance and therefore there should be no accumulation of the food waste or other water waste and other places. Every place should be kept scrupulously clean. Why effective pest control is essential for food processing plant and warehouse? Not only the food pests, so the home pests or the industry pests which are present in the commercial areas spread diseases, but they also cause damage to food supplies, to equipment, buildings and bring disrepute to the company. It is a legal requirement for business operators, food business operators to take on reasonable precautions to prevent food pests namely rats, mice, cockroach, flying insects coming into their food storage and preparation area and this will prevent the control. Next comes the good housekeeping. Keep your premises clean and tidy and monitor the areas which are assessed infrequently such as under stairs, cupboards, ceiling void, etc. Premises for gaps and holes around the pipework to external door, windows, drains and clean up spillages immediately. Store open packets of food in rodent proof containers and rotate stock. Keep all rubbish inside dustbin with close fitting lids. It is advisable to install electric insect killers. Then is the cleaning. It, cleaning in a proper manner with proper disinfectants is very very important. The equipments have to be cleaned etc. Cleaning record should be kept for at least minimum of three months. Cleaning chemicals must be kept in suitable labeled containers and stored away from food. Similarly, equipment should be also cleaned and stored away from the food. Finally, the pest control report should be present in every facility. These reports must be concise, be legible and stored in an easily accessible binder. A typical pest control report should contain treatment date, details of pest control contractor, name of technician servicing the site, the details of the customer, name of the contact person on the site, type of visit scheduled or follow up or call, pest found, action taken, pesticide used, location of the baits and monitors, quantities of pesticide used, risk assessment and post treatment precautions that were used and recommendations on proofing, hygiene and storage. Then details of follow up inspections also must be indicated. The report must be signed by the pest control technician as well as by the customer and the record should be kept of any pest sightings including those made by personnel who are not actually involved in pest management. This can be from a book or a folder where the above information can be locked in. In conclusion, in this module you have learnt about the various pest control programs and about the different type of pests that are likely to occur in the food manufacturing or in food preparation areas. You have also learnt about the crawling insects, about the flying insects, the rodent pests and which is not really a pest but a nuisance pest and about the high risk foods that are attracting the pests more than other type of food and how the food therefore should be first of all stored and how the pest infestation should be avoided in the godowns, the inventory system management that is involved to ensure that 
the food and the raw material both are devoid of pest contamination because after the food is prepared also in the case of ready to eat foods and other categories of foods until it is consumed they are stored and during the storage also again the pest contamination can occur sometime we may have ready to cook or sometime we may have totally ready to eat so appropriate procedures to avoid the pest infestation of these products should be thought of to achieve this the food manufacturers have to have documentation procedures should engage the services of pest control authorities or licensed vendors who may be able to manage the pest in a given area and in that they should have the date of uh, the pest control measures that were employed the pest sightings the different areas in the food processing areas where the different type of pests were noticed and what actions were taken and how efficacious these actions were and all other details that are required to be documented this is required because in case of another future occurrence or a epidemic kind of pest infestation then the food business operator has the opportunity to go through the past documentation uh, records or the information and therefore could be able to take more efficient and judicious action to curtail the pest infestation and pest should not be present in the food not only it is aesthetically very uh, unappealing or appalling to a consumer but it they also transmit diseases many of the pests like rodents can transfer very infectious diseases therefore the food manufacturer or the food retailer should be aware of the importance of pest control program even in the case of street vendors or small food vendors who operate through the carts or other small business operating units should be very careful to manage otherwise they would be soon out of business and they would get a bad reputation as well as well as loss of business